one shot color cameras will never be able to replace narrow band imaging but with the filters like the optolong l extreme my itis nbz radian triad we're getting pretty close to being able to do some pretty awesome fake Hubble palette, whatever you want to call it, type of images. Here's an image I just processed of the elephant trunk, and you can just see how it looks. Now, when we compare this to a lot of the different images on the internet, you can see that there's a lot of artistic liberty to do what you want, but I really like the Hubble palette. It's all new for me. It's cool. Most of my process is going to be based off of uh, Luke Umatico, Luke's uh, YouTube channel here, where he did this back in August. I've tried a bunch of other people's methods. This seems to be the most easy and clear cut and allows me to insert the different scripts and things that I like to use to make my images easier and also give you the flexibility to make them look I'm more amazing if you want to spend more time on them. So I really like this tutorial. I'm going to link it in the actual description below so you guys can take a look at it. Uh, but I'm going to give you my twist on it and we're going to try to do it quickly. My name is Chad and this is the Easy Astro Images channel. Thanks a lot for stopping by here. If you like tutorials like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll put a playlist below that shows you all of my easy processing tutorials. So let's get to doing this fake Hubble palette with a shot with my 183, my William Optics GT81 and Idis NBZ filter. So this picture has already been aligned, stacked and all that kind of stuff. And if you take a look at it here, we have just a ton of signal inside here. We've got a lot of stars. We've got a lot of variation. I can almost really see like three variations of colors when I look. I see this outer red, uh, maybe four, a little bit lighter of a red, and then kind of this brownish color, and then the blue on the inside here. So we really got a lot of cool stuff to work with out of these filters. And you can see that it's pretty amazing what you can do. And again, you can do pretty much anything you want to do with these pictures. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of crop in a little bit here, get rid of this little star on the side and all the different noise from all that kind of stuff. And that looks good to me right there. Now this, I don't have any gradients in this at all. This is all really clean data. If we do a super boost here, we should be able to see that, that yeah. And this isn't vignetting. This is just black sky behind there. So let's reset that. I'm going to just go ahead and use an automatic background extraction. And we're going to set the function degree all the way down to like one. We don't really need to be like super aggressive with this image here. Now, if you have a vignetting or a big gradient, then you'll want to be a little bit more aggressive. Maybe try two before you go to three. Four seems to just be way too much for me. So we're just going to subtract, discard, and replace the target image. And that is going to be it when it comes to our automatic background extractor. Now, the next thing I am going to do is I am going to run the auto color script. If you do not have this auto color script, I am going to have a link to it in the description below. This script works fantastic. Just watch what it does to these colors here. I mean, just keep an eye on it. And as soon as it's done here, you're going to see Boom. So the auto color script just finished. And I mean, wow, it looks almost like a picture now. It just looks amazing. I just love the way that this looks. It turned out just awesome. Now we're, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right. So we redid the screen stretch there and go ahead and add an SCNR. Right. That's done. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to run my favorite, the easy processing suite, easy denoise tool. And this will take a few minutes. So we'll, we will be right back when that's done. All right. So we got the image denoised. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get all of this ready for stretching. 
So you can either use the Starnet Plus Plus, or I use Star Exterminator. There's a link to that as well below if you want to go ahead and try to use this at its discounted rate. I think it's free for about a month. And we want to generate a star image and we are in a linear non-stretched state. And this will take uh, a little bit. Now that is complete. We have two images here. We have our starless and of course our stars. So we're going to close the exterminator and we are going to open up the histogram transformation and we can go ahead and work on our stars first if you guys want. So we'll uh, reset everything and link to that, open up a real time preview. And you know, you pretty much just want to stretch the stars about as much as you want to. You don't really want to go too crazy. Uh, the whole point is to de-emphasize them. So I like to do about one and a half type of stretches just to have a nice little curve, maybe brighten them up a little bit with that right there with, and that looks, uh, looks pretty good. I think we'll pull them down just a little bit more and that will be perfect. Now we can just go ahead and finish working on our stars. What you want to do is go up to image and click on invert. And you can see now that we've got uh, some different colors going on in there. So the first thing I like to do is just do the SCNR to get rid of the green and then change that to red and get rid of the red. And then we can go up to image and invert that back. And yeah, we still got star color in there. So that's good. But if you want to, you can go into curves. We can link that and click on the saturation tab and just grab here in the middle and just pull the saturation up just a little bit. So our stars are done and we will minimize those and park that. We'll actually open that back up and we will just change that to the name stars. And now we can work on our main image here. And if you take a look at how well the star exterminator does, I mean, it really does a great job, way better than Starnet in my opinion. There's a few spots possibly that we could fix now what you would want to do is go ahead and we'll stretch this first and then you could go into photoshop and just use the the band-aid healing tool and just touch that up yourself i like stretching everything myself you see the shadows there those numbers change in you don't want to go in there and clip that off a whole lot you know you want to try to keep your background nice and dark but you don't want to get rid of a lot of data and just go ahead and stretch until your heart's content. And now you're going to get an image that is like this, that it all pretty much looks like it's really, really red, but you, it's fine. This is exactly what we want things to look like before we go into using this actual process. So now is when things get really fun. We're actually going to go up to process and channel extraction. And we are going to basically turn this into three different images, R, G, and B. And it's gonna give us three grayscale images. And we'll go ahead and minimize this one and put it up here in the corner. So you can see we've got a blue channel, a red channel, and of course a green channel. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of one of these, the blue, because it is the worst looking one. And we're going to use a combination of the green and the red to make a new blue one that looks a lot better. So bye bye blue. It's out of here. So the whole point now is to make this green channel here look as close to the red as we can. So we want to open up the histogram transformation tool. And we want to start uh, clicking on the live preview and we want to start bringing this dark up here a little bit. And then we can bring in the high tones here. And that looks, boy, that looks really close right off the bat. That I got pretty lucky on that one right there. 
So see how this looks just like this as far as the darkness and the light, like we might be able to move a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna make that as our image right there. And when we close everything, there we go. Those two look pretty close. This one probably could use a little bit of curves transformation. So we'll go into the curves transformation and make sure that we are set to RGB. And what we wanna do is we wanna like try to bring out these highlights and edges of this stuff a little bit. So that did that right there. And then we need to drop down our dark a little bit. Yeah, just a slight little tweak to the pixel math process. And we are going to make a fake blue channel. Go in here and just simply type R times 0 0.6 plus 0.6 G times 0 0.4. And then apply that, and there is our new blue image. All right, so now that we have our new blue channel, we're going to name this B. We are going to go into the LRGB combination, and we are going to use our red channel as our luminance, our red channel as our H, we're actually gonna use the blue that we created as our green and the green on the blue. And we're gonna select chrominance noise reduction. And we should be good with just uh, applying global here. And we should get a nice cool looking faux Hubble palette image. All right, and there we go, guys. Look at that baby. We'll just go ahead and park these all up here, close this, and all of the heavy lifting literally is done now. Like it's just all fun from here. So you can do whatever you want to do with this image at this point. So the first thing that I like to do is go into curves and just kind of turn up the saturation on this thing. Um, so that way, we can just kind of get a little bit better idea of the color separation that we have. And you can see that you can just go as far as you want with this color saturation. So you're gonna wanna do it in steps though. So just go one step, reset your tool, go another step, and now everything is just really starting to pop. So you check that out right there. I mean, at this point you could call it done and you could just throw your stars back in there and you would be good to go. But what we can do just to show you a little bit more is we can actually go in and start working on all of the different colors. So if you wanna work on the blue, you can basically start putting in a little bit of extra blue into the picture. And you can see if you add a little bit too much, it's gonna start getting things a little bit purpley, which I actually did a little bit of a purple one before and I thought it looked really, really sweet. So I'm gonna add a little blue there, reset that, click on the red. Red is gonna influence those gold tones there, so you don't wanna go too far or you're gonna start getting into the purple. So we'll just bump that up just a tad and reset that. Now, if we go back into RGB curves, now we can actually start working on the image a little bit and we can make the trunk pop out a little bit more. We can bring down the black just a touch if we want to. I mean, it really is up to you. Like this one looks so much different than the one that I made earlier. You can just see all the little purple and stuff like that that's built into it. But I'm liking it. It's I really think it's cool the way it looks. You can go off the rails here a little bit if you want to and use things like color masks. For example, if we wanted to work on just the reds, I have these down below as far as in the description. These color masks uh, came from a person that Luke had on it as well, and they work just fantastic. So you can see that we just created 
a red mask there, and then you're going to want to blur it a little bit by dropping this extra little mask blur tool that he has on there maybe once or twice and if you want to this is totally optional you can go in now and you can apply this red mask and we can go ahead and hide the mask and you could go into curves and just solely work on that red see how we can just bring that up a little bit and make that a little bit more golden. So these curves are really nice in these color masks. I like that right there. And you literally can keep going with all of these different masks. You can just do whatever you want. Now, I do think that I have a little bit too much magenta in here. So I am going to run this script in here, which is correct magenta stars. This actually will work on an entire image open up open that up and click on execute and that kind of brought back our gold and blue colors a little bit and then another one if you really want to try it out which is just part of that sky pixels utilities is the dark structures enhance so you can turn the amount down a little bit if you want to but we'll just go ahead and click it and see what happens and you can see that we've got a lot more dark definition there. I mean, this is really just turning out super cool. Loving the way it looks. Now you can go ahead and do your favorite kind of like after noise reduction if you want to, whether you want to use Topaz Denoise or something along those lines. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a TIFF image. Uncheck this, uncheck that, make it 16-bit. And then we'll fire up Topaz here, and I'm just gonna use the auto settings on medium, and you can see that it is making a pretty good difference, and it's not killing our detail or nothing like that at all. Some people like Topaz, some people don't. I just try not to be super aggressive with it. You know, to me, that looks good. We're gonna be putting this stuff online on Facebook, so it really doesn't matter. So now that that's done, we'll go ahead and open it back up here in PixInsight. And we'll go ahead and change the identifier back to Starless. And I'm not going to make, uh, well, we'll have to actually call it Starless 2. So I'm not going to make any more adjustments. I mean, you can make as many adjustments as you want. I think you get the actual point on what we're doing. And uh, the last thing we're going to do is just put our stars back together in here. So we'll go to the pixel math and reset and clear it all out. And we're gonna create new image. Actually, we'll just, yeah, create new image. And we're gonna do stars plus starless two. And there it is. There is our image. All done, super easy, super fast. Noise looks okay, it's not super, bad you know obviously this was a fast process but i just wanted to show you guys how you can actually do all this stuff take your time do as much as you want i don't have a lot of data in on this so it also looks a lot worse because of that but the whole point is just to show how you can get this fake hubble palette going on and i just love it guys so thanks for sticking around with me we will see you back on the next video peace